manifesto today, we are seeing in there that they are taking us. So these are the details of the 2024 manifesto. This is, the, this is, the, this is from the 2024. Okay. All right. So in essence, what we are seeing is that it's a promise for them to undo their own deeds. Hmm. And that's it for manifesto check tonight. The verdict as always. It's, it's with the it's people. With the people. Uh, but the evidence of the taxes and this impact is, is in our yes. pockets. Yes, our, our colleague pockets. was actually crying. Mm. I mean, it's the reason he had to, he couldn't understand why it mm. caused this, for him to pay this much. But hopefully, the next MPP government with this promise, he will pay less than this. Anyway, well, it's with the people a verdict in, indeed. I thank you so much, Dennis Barber. With them. There's just more of this you can find on 3news.com. Coming up next, there's been a development at the National Sports Authority. The man at the top has been sacked, and we'll tell you why, and whether that solves the problems that we're faced with. From the sports journalist perspective, Sadiq Adam is going to be joining us. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. President Kofuado has sacked the Director General of the National Sports Authority, NSA, Doji Numaikavo from his role. According to three sports sources at the Jubilee House, the decision takes immediate effect. President Kufuado is said to have decided to relieve the Director General of the Sports Authority of his post following news about the poor state of the country's football pitches. Dr. Doji Numekavo was appointed as the Interim Director General of the National Sports Authority on the 26th of February this year. 2024, following the departure of Professor Peter Chumesi, who served in that role for, for six years. So let's have a conversation on this. And uh, sports journalist uh, Sadiq Adams is joining us. We call him Sports Obama. Sadiq, it's good to have you connect with us here on Ghana tonight. Uh, good news for you. Does it, does it give you indication that all our problems with this poor stadia we have now, uh, at least, is being solved? Well, thank you very much, um, Alfred. Not really. I think that the distraction is far too evident that a sack at this point does very little to what has been, I mean, omissions that have been done under the National Sports Authority. In fact, uh, if the sacking of the National Sports Authority boss is going to change anything with respect to the uh, international embarrassment we have received last week and this week that would have been done but nothing of this sort would change the nature of the stadia would change the fact that we are not going to play matches at home and the fact that we do not currently as a proud football nation have one single category three standard pitch i think uh, the decision to sack him may have um, emanated from other factors because the president is quite aware what has transpired in the last few years and the money that has been sunk under the guise of renovating our various stadia. I see. So you said this is, this is a distraction at best from where you said. It's in no way give you any indication that this is a serious development in addressing our problems? Not really, uh, because of the previous National Sports Authority director was charged at the... Um, Auditor General's report. So the Auditor General charged the National Sports Authority. He was sat in March, that six months ago. It did nothing. It did little to the nature of our pitches. Uh, there was Robert Safo Mensah, who was found uh, to have involved himself in misconduct in 2018. He was removed before Professor Chumas was brought in. So from 2018 till date, the National Sports Authority has had three separate director generals, if the, this uh, moves were going to change anything with respect to their structure and governance, uh, I have been in this and I think that this is only a distraction. One, two, the damage has been caused and three, the new person coming will do very little within this short time to get us back because the problem is not about the changing of the National Sports Authority director. It is about the whole governance structure that has been politicized. This is an office that should be depoliticized. It requires expertise. It requires people to stay longer, have institutional memory, people with the professional um, touch to know how to manage sporting infrastructure. 
and we are going to get another political appointment. And at the end of the day, the same incompetence and uh, the, the extreme level of negligence that has characterized the National Sports Authority is not going to change if the governance structure and the appointing uh, powers of the <clears throat> president doesn't change. If you are still going to get political people, uh, the previous National Sports Authority director was contesting for parliamentary city's constituency. This current National Sports Authority director is currently contesting, and I, I have understood that it's one of the reasons why he's even kept long and the president kept contemplating on the decision because he's going to contest for a, a highly contestable seat in the greater Accra region until we stop the appointment of sports, uh, I mean, political people, square pegs in round holes, nothing substantial is going to change uh, to the stadia in this country. It's important to make this point because all the videos of the stadia we have in this country that we are, we are showing on our screens, disgraceful to say the least, is it not? It's very embarrassing to know that at this point, Ghana is in the same category as Central African Republic, Djibouti, Eritrea, Burundi, uh, Somalia, Sudan, countries that are war torn, Chad, Niger, countries that have been banned by CAF for lack of suitable playing surface. And we were a founding father of CAF. We were one of the first African countries to join FIFA. Of all the country, countries that have been banned, we are the only country to have attended the World Cup on four different occasions and 24 times at the African Cup of Nations. Some of them have not even qualified before for the AFCON since its inception. And when things like this happen and there is leadership, it should send strong signals and, I mean, bold statements should be made. We have been talking about this for a very long time. If you see the nature of the stadia in this country, as of 2015, 2016, 2017, I can be very uh, emphatic. As of 2017, we had four of our stadia passing the requisite or the requirement for gra uh, granting the approval for hosting a CAF category uh, two or three game. As of 2017, as of today, that's like seven years down the lane. We do not have one. So from four or five, because we hosted uh, Uganda in Tamale in 2017, Medema mm -hmm. and Asante Kotoko played in the FA Cup in 2015 final in the Sipon. Cape Coast have uh, been used to host matches until the six match destruction. Kumasi right. Sports Stadium, Accra Sports Stadium. So we had five as of 2017. What may have transpired to the point that all of them are in complete destruction and embarrassment? It's deplorable, I mean, to say the least, dishonorable. I mean, despicable. I, it's, it's scandalous if you think about it. And, look, and, and, and look, if we don't see, if we don't see this as a national shame, I don't know. And you saw how the CAF president was decrying and feeling shy to mention the name of Ghana, that what on earth will lead to a country like Ghana not having a standard? That is the basic pitch to host matches. And when I say it's not about the, the, the manner of sacking people, the negligence that five, six, seven, eight, nine days to a game, an international game, the National Sports Authority is able to grant access of the playing fields for all manner of events, including a music concert, church. And we know that the natural, uh, I mean, reclamation of the pitch takes over two, three months to get it to the standard. If you have a director general of the National Sports Authority who goes ahead to grant access to church events for cars to be driven on the field with 10 days or 15 days to an international game, it means that he is either being negligent, he is ignorant of the role he's occupying, or he's purely incompetent. And you can combine that perhaps it is all, I mean, enveloped in the recklessness that they deal with. Because if you do this, you are destroying the stadium, you are destroying the pitch. But what they are interested in is the money they get. And that is why I'm surprised that they have kept long maintaining this political structure of the National Sports Authority. Instead of, I mean, the, the, the scandals there is serious. The amount of money we waste in, under the guise of renovating stadium in this country could have built an entirely new stadium in another jurisdiction. And that's a shame and an embarrassment that we have gotten this far. I think that sacking him will not change anything because the previous sports authority director 
was on the same path. He was sacked six months ago. Now we don't even, when he was living, we had one. Now we have none. Unfortunately, it's getting worse, is it not? Sadiq, thank you. Thank you so much for leaving us with a reality check to go to bed with and think about all the sorrows and wake up in the morning, hopefully, to a brighter day. But make a date with the New Day team. Um, tomorrow morning, uh, they bring you ma the constituency and the community manifesto. Uh, they're bringing the voices and the microphone to a community near you. So make some time and watch New Day tomorrow morning. And across all media journal platforms, there's a lot of offering for you in the morning. My name is Alfred Okansi. On behalf of the rest of the team here on Ghana tonight, to have a good night.